And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Three days is a long time, my friend. They were scared. They were scared for their own lives. And uh, and Moses has to deal with this, but he's dealing it with it with God. God is with him the whole way. So here we go. And they came to Mara. Okay, that word Mara means something. Watch this. They could not drink the waters of Mara. Why? Because they were bitter. They were bitter waters. They could not drink that, and they were super thirsty. For that reason, it was named Mara, because Mara means bitter, right? So that was the reason. So this place, they found water, and they're they're in this dry, dry desert area of Midian, and they found water, but they couldn't drink it. You know how hard that would be to deal with? You know, that would just be horrible. So the people grumbled at Moses saying, what are we to drink? And what happened? Then he, that is Moses, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, a tree. Now, why is that important? We know that Jesus died on the cross, and that's been referenced as the tree in many places in the Bible, in the New Testament, as the cursed tree. He was on that tree. And there's so much to this. This is amazing, you guys. Watch this. So they cried out, and the Lord showed him, that is Moses, a tree. He also shows you a tree. Then he cried out to the Lord. So when you cry out to the Lord too, my friend, remember the cross. When I am really hurting, I'm going through a very hard time feeling despaired and feeling just like there's no hope, I cry out to God. And you know what he does? He leads me to the tree. He leads me back to the cross and 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 reminds me of what he did on the cross and how I'm saved forever. And so are you if you're a Christian. It's about the tree, the cross. That's what it's about, my friend. The whole good news, it came down to the gospel. What Jesus did on that cross, dying and shedding his blood as that perfect Passover lamb, shedding his blood for you and for me. This is amazing, guys. So that's what we're seeing here. And the Lord showed him a tree, the tree. So Moses took that tree and he threw it into the waters and the waters became sweet. Isn't that awesome? I love that. The waters became sweet. I remember we used to go to Lake Tahoe all the time, and there was this water that we used to drink. It actually came from the lake, and it was the sweetest, cleanest tasting water uh, that you can imagine. It was actually Lake uh, Fallen Leaf Lake, which was near Lake Tahoe, and the water came from that pure, pure water of that lake, and it was delicious. It actually tastes sweet and good. And it's just, it was awesome. So, so that gives you the idea of what's going on here. God made those bitter waters sweet through what? The tree. That's how. So Moses put the tree in the water and all of a sudden they can drink. The, the millions of people, some estimates are 3 million, were able to drink of the water and be satisfied. Now, John chapter 7 says this. If Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit, my friend. Then he came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and the 70 date palms, and they camped there beside the water. So God led them. After that, he led them to this this oasis of, of full of dates, which they could eat, right? Those sweet date fruit that was on these trees and this delicious spring water. And they were satisfied. God satisfied them. But they had to trust him and believe in him first. And and he's showing them all these things. He brings them to that refreshing living water. As Jesus talked about, that living water is always a picture of the Holy Spirit, my friend. That's what the living water is. He is the living water. God, God the Holy Spirit. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are triune 
one God, but they're triune. It's a unity of one God. And the Holy Spirit is called also, he could be like the oil, right? It's the oil. He's also the, the wind that came down and blew into that house when there was Pentecost. And he's also described as the living water. And I would say the sweet living water, right? Because sweet water is like fruit, right? Good fruit, good sweet fruit. And what produces good fruit in you? Yes, the Holy Spirit, my friend. The Holy Spirit produces good fruit. He will produce good fruit in you as you drink, you take in of the Holy Spirit and fill up overflowing with that sweet living water. God has that for you too, my friend. So I pray now that he will fill you and me freshly and overflowingly with his Holy Spirit. Overflow us, God, so that we can produce sweet, good fruit in our lives for you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Don't forget to hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed by it, I promise you. So click on this playlist.